The District Assembly's Common Fund Act 1993 as amended mandates metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies across the country to allocate 3% of their common funds to the disabled communities in their jurisdictions. The ultimate goal of the 3% allocation is to reduce poverty and severe economic hardship among persons with disabilities. Available records from the one municipal office of the social welfare and community development indicate that the municipality has about 2,000 persons with disabilities. Some of these physically challenged persons are beneficiaries of the disability fund as it offers them some form of economic independence, especially through financial empowerment and skills training. This notwithstanding, some persons with disabilities in the municipality are unhappy that the undue delays in the disbursement of their share of the common fund are increasingly defeating the purpose of the fund. The common fund is giving us not enough for us. In fact, it doesn't come very, very, very uh, frequently. It doesn't come always. It will come once in a while. And, and, and our friends are always in need, to, uh, to, uh, in need of money to support themselves or to make themselves uh, somehow better. You know, others are not, uh, others are not their family, they, their parents, they are just adding, that's, that's how some of them are in the uh, street begging. Because they have no anybody to get to help them or to feed them, to, to give them money to buy their need. That's why we are calling on the government to actually implement that uh, what, common fund to be coming always so that we get money to support you in, in Upper West here. City news sources indicate that the disabled in the one municipality have not received any disbursement for more than four quarters now. Mubarak Haruna and his peers took up the challenge to learn to weave, but he says they are confronted with the challenge of unemployment. I completed this uh, work in uh, 2013. I wrote a lot of letters to other various institutions for them to help me so that I can also train my colleagues. I even went to uh, Don Bosco School, that's a mental challenge. The head was so, so happy. He wrote his cabinet letter and I added my letter. We sent it to special education. We did not hear anything. Wadef, they also requested for me, but we it didn't yield any results. So a lot of my friends are also facing the same challenges. So if the government can able to look on, on those issues so that we can, when we also finish this training, we can also share our daily to our colleagues who are also in the various schools. Because this is what we are also doing to take care of our children and our wives. So it's not a, a job that is not helping, it's a job that is helping all, all of us. So if we're helping to train our colleagues, I think they also come out with something. The plight of Haruna and his peers is no different from that of these physically challenged tailors who are complaining of worsening economic conditions due to the current economic situation. So I am going to a resource center and I am going to go to the house. I am going to go to the house and I am going to go to the house and I am going to go to the house. I don't to say what I saw her government along, but it's a quarter head, but you're chilly to GM. Some more Germans and Cordu Kutika to mental Jimbo Elan fear. Kabama a quarter. When I'm by a local woman to you, name me my Jory baby. No, no, but I'm Jora Numbo baby. But I'm a jar and mantar or sombo, but I can't get in Jinchana to my meeting your girl be Tinjin China government at all, so not a sombo can I add. Near Jatro, Sikria Motoki, the Bontros on number two on him. Baman Wana Cheti Bibi. The War Municipal Assembly, through the Department of Social Welfare and Community Development, constructed this facility to serve as a one stop shop for the Blind Weavers Association. Uh, this facility right behind us uh, is a center for the people with disabilities, especially the visually impaired, uh, those who do weaving and sell. Um, we, we have received uh, concerns from them uh, with regards to the safety and security of their lives, especially when they go into town uh, to sell their products. And those are the camp beds and other small, small items that they weave. There are countless occasions where some of them are knocked down by vehicles uh, some get themselves wounded in another way or form as a result of roaming on the streets. So when we hear their plight, we think that it is something that we have to attend to. And then looking at the population of this municipality, um, in totality we are about 200,000 people. And then going, uh, 
200,000 people, I mean the population of this municipality, and going through our records, especially with regards to the people with disabilities, we've registered over 2,000, and that accounts for about 1% of uh, the total population of the municipality, and that is quite significant. And then we cannot allow them to be on their own just like that. Um, these are people who are disadvantaged in one way or the other, and we think that as municipal authority, we should find a way of helping them to incorporate very well into the society. The right to dignified life is enshrined in the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. Persons living with disabilities here in the Upper West region are therefore calling on the government to help enhance their living standards. Reporting for City News, my name is Latif Mahama. Wah.